Hi, Ed. Hello. Um, I'm sure that most of the people here, again, um, know you, but for those who don't, can you just take a minute to tell us about yourself and your company and how you use research? Sure. I've been in market research my whole career and on the uh, agency or provider side my whole career. I started off at Yankelovich. I then had a, a long stint at what was Roper Starch Worldwide that then became Roper ASW and subsequently NOP World and then GFK. And I was, uh, I was the CEO of Roper ASW when I left. Uh, along the way, I wrote a book, The Influentials, in 2003, and that got me involved in what was then sort of the emerging world of, of word of mouth marketing. And, uh, and it was based upon some of the insights in the influentials that we learned that, that most conversations then and, and, and now still take place offline. And so in 2006, my business partner Brad Fay and I started up the Keller Fay Group to focus exclusively on research around word of mouth and to help marketers to be able to, uh, to fully tap the force of, of word of mouth and word of mouth advocacy. Great. So we're here today primarily to discuss your new book, the face-to-face -face book, um, and everyone in the audience will be getting a copy, thanks to ESPN. Um, and as has been mentioned, there will be a book signing during the 10, 20 break. Um, what prompted you to write this book? So uh, first of all, I do want to thank ESPN for agreeing to, to sponsor that. Very generous of them, and we thank them for that. They've been a great client of ours. Um, what prompted us to write the book, you know, we're we're thrilled that the, uh, that the ARF has a whole track here around social media, and there's a whole key issue forum track around social media as well. Maybe four or five years ago at the uh, audience measurement conferences, there was maybe a, a single session, and I think it's a reflection of the fact that, that there's a huge and growing interest in all things social, and, uh, and, and we fully agree and think there is a, a huge social wave that is uh, rolling across the U.S. and, in fact, rolling across countries around the world where increasingly the decisions that consumers make are based upon the advice and recommendation of friends, colleagues, family members, and others with whom they are in, uh, in regular and ongoing contact. So we, so we fully believe in the, in the power of social, but at the same time, we've seen that there is a, a strong belief on the part of many that when it comes to social, we're primarily talking about online social networks, and yet our research has been very clear that, that offline isn't just a piece of the puzzle. In fact, it's the, the dominant piece. 90% of, of word of mouth about products, services, and brands still takes place offline, mostly face-to-face. -face. Other research uh, confirms that. The, the most recent work by the um, USA Touchpoints, uh, if you look at, at, at their data, you'll see a very similar type of, of pattern as it relates to conversations. So what we wanted to do was to write a book that uh, really maybe flipped it a little bit away from social media and started looking instead at social consumers. And if you look at social consumers, you start to think about all the ways uh, that consumers are, are motivated, when, where, and how they talk about brands, and you start to discover that there's a, 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 a multiple groups of ways that brands can help to unleash the power of, of word of mouth advocacy, and that's what the face-to-face -face book is about. So what data can you share with us um, that shows that face-to-face -face conversations are more important for brands and, and more influential in purchasing decisions? So uh, the first thing we would just say is that 90% is that of conversations are offline, and so we think to sort of ignore that and focus just on online would, would be a mistake. Secondly, our data have shown that there is more credibility when people uh, receive information based upon face-to-face -face conversation uh, than, than the conversations that take place online, and there's more intent to purchase as a result of those uh, activities. And some of the people who have done uh, market mix models using our data and social media data have found a very uh, strong and powerful connection uh, between those offline conversations and purchase, and that is what it's, what it's all about, as you've, as you've heard multiple times this morning already. But, but I would say that more important than sort of is, is offline more powerful than online is really uh, the importance of figuring out when and why people engage in offline conversation and when and why do they engage in online conversation. And there's some very interesting academic work that's been done that took our data to look at offline word of mouth. It took data from NM Insight to look at online. It looked at the um, uh, at, at, at data uh, that come out of uh, YNR, Brand Asset Valuator, and some custom research uh, that was done by Decipher. Uh, the academics come from uh, Hebrew University, NYU, and, and Rochester Business School. And what they discovered is that when it comes to online conversation, uh, the, the, the forces or the drivers that motivate people to talk are quite different. 
than offline. For online conversation, it's primarily around social signaling, somehow sort of letting my network know that I'm in the know about something, I've got a hot new product, I'm at a, I'm at a concert that people are interested in going to. Second are sort of product fundamentals and emotional factors turn out to be third in terms of driving online conversation. For offline, those are exactly reversed. So emotional drivers, which we just heard from Brand Keys, and, and we agree emotional drivers become the number one thing that motivates people to talk offline. So excitement about something, being in awe of something, maybe being upset or disappointed, any of those positive or negative emotions, uh, those sort of product fundamentals are second, and social signaling is last. So there's really uh, this notion that maybe that offline and online are mirrors of each other turns out not to be true. And so you really have to understand from a brand point of view, are we a brand and is the story we want to tell about something that's going to fit that social signaling, in which case online makes an awful lot of sense, or are we more interested in those emotional drivers, in which case strategies to help spark offline conversation are probably the way to go. Well, so it seems that you know, part of the reason online social media is such a hot topic um, is because it leaves sort of a, a digital trail, which you would think would make it easier to measure. Um, but how can brands measure their impact in, in offline word of mouth? It's so important. So, so this, uh, this notion of the digital trail is absolutely true. Uh, when we were uh, interviewing Artie Bolgren from ESPN as part of the book, he, uh, he calls this the digital dilemma, that there is a, a huge trail that, that is left by all things digital, and yet, as Artie says, just because the analog world is, is harder to measure doesn't mean it's less real, and it doesn't mean that it's less important. We just have to work harder to be able to, uh, to measure it and to in incorporate it, and we believe fully in that. And that's what our ongoing research is is, is all about. We do have a, a syndicated study that we launched in 2006, and every week, week in and week out, out of the year, we interview a cross-section of Americans and ask them to keep track for us of the conversations about brands that they've had during a 24-hour period. Uh, they use a diary to help them remember uh, the conversations they've had, and that picks up both offline, face-to-face, -face, and over the phone. It picks up online, social media conversations, texting, emailing, and so out of this, uh, at the end of, uh, on an ongoing basis, uh, we have uh, uh, tens of thousands of interviews per year, and we can look at both the offline conversations as well as the online conversations and the things that help to, to drive each. So how can those offline and online conversations and, and social behaviors be incorporated into an integrated media strategy? You know, we think when it comes to sort of unleashing uh, advocacy, um, Paul Adams, who's the uh, brand experience manager for Facebook, and I were speaking at a conference uh, 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 a couple weeks ago, and he makes the point that we need to think not about a Facebook strategy or a Twitter strategy or a Foursquare strategy. We need a people strategy. We agree completely with that. And when you, when you think that way, you don't start by with, with the channel, the social media channel. What you need to start with is the stories about the brand. And every CMO we interviewed for our book, and we profiled quite a number of case studies of a whole uh, host of brands, they all start by talking about the power of the story. And so we think in, in word of mouth, we need to think first around sort of what are the stories that can, are going to engage people to talk about a brand, and sometimes uh, then, then who are the people who are going to help spread the the word, uh, who are the brand advocates, who are the people talking most about your category and your brand, and only then do we get to the, to the channel, and when we start thinking about it that way, we start to discover that from a channel point of view, there's a, a, an enormous number of, of options that are at the marketer's disposal. It turns out that, that advertising plays a huge role in helping to spark word of mouth. It's not just a, uh, a small piece. Um, things that are happening on the brand website and in other forms of owned media are quite important. And so we think we need to focus first on the story, then on the people, then we get to the channels. And we think that the integrated marketing plan comes out of that. Well, so since we are at an audience measurement conference, can you tell us how your findings about this, this integration in, in offline word of mouth can be integrated and used in media planning and buying? So as I said, we've been tracking uh, word of mouth now for, for more than six years. About three or four years ago, we started adding a, a media measurement component to this as well. And we started to learn that there are, are certain media audiences that have a higher propensity to be talking about certain categories and certain brands. And so we work with a, a lot of different media across uh, cable, broadcast, print, 
uh, online uh, to help with the media planning uh, process. And we sort of think about a fish with a fish is swimming kind of a approach to this. And we've seen a huge impact uh, when, the, when the audience is properly chosen and the, and the right brands are advertised. You can see a lift of literally tens of millions of, of additional conversations. And to move this all forward, uh, we just announced last week, some of you may have seen this, but we've now fused our talk track data uh, with MRI, and so we're now able to go out together and we hope help to move forward this media planning process from a word of mouth perspective further as, as a result of that fusion. Uh, over the next uh, month or two, we think we'll have another announcement uh, with Nielsen as well for their National People Meter. And we also made an announcement a few weeks ago that our data have been incorporated into market mix models by people like Market Share. So we think that there's going to be a growing opportunity to really pinpoint and do media planning for a word of mouth outcome. Well, that's great. You'll have to come back and tell us about that. Be happy to. Um, so I, we are out of time. And let's, let's close with that question we've been asking everyone. If you had your research magic wand and you could make one thing happen tomorrow in the world of research, what would it be? Well, before tomorrow, there's today. So if I could wave a magic wand, <laughs> I'd say you should all see my partner, Brad Fay and MediaVest and, uh, and MBI talk about uh, a social context and word of mouth in the uh, breakout sessions. So that's number one for the magic <laughs> wand. And the second is, I think it would be that, that we would start to see advocacy and word of mouth become a key success metric for all marketing. And that really is, I think, the fundamental story in the face-to-face uh, -face Facebook. It's that all media can and should be social, and word-of-mouth advocacy is ultimately what's going to drive the marketplace forward, and that should be part of all success metrics and evaluation for all marketing, not just that one piece that's for online social media. Sounds good to me. Good. Um, here's the book. Thank you again so much. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and you'll, you'll all have a, a chance to, to speak with Ed um, at 10.20 during the break. Thanks Thank very you. much.